Okay, so let's get started then. The first part of our today's session will be devoted to theoretical aspects of narration recording, storyboarding, and working with the video. In the second part, we will discuss further how we can successfully edit pictures and videos in VVideo software. Welcome to week four. In week four, we will focus on how you can record audio narration that will be used in your digital story. We will examine some of the most common types of microphones and recording devices that you can use to record the script you wrote. We will also demonstrate how to record and edit your digital audio files using Audacity. That's a free audio recording software available for Windows and Macintosh computers. Of course, if you prefer, you may use any audio editing program to record and edit your narration. The important thing to remember is that recording your voice is a key component of the digital storytelling process, since it explains the information you are presenting and provides a personal touch to your story. We feel strongly that this part of the process should not be overlooked. This week, we will also explore how you can find and download appropriate music that supports the theme of your story. We will focus on music that is in the public domain or is free of copyright restrictions so that it can be used in your digital story legally and at no cost. Okay, so this week we have to follow through some objectives. Here are the things that you need to do to complete this week's assignment. In the first place, as you already have a ready-made narration, the final version of the narrative you are writing for the digital story under one sun, you will record the script of your digital story using one of the methods described in the video lectures. And also you will select appropriate music for your digital story. That's going to be optional. And this music is supposed to be a background music that will match your theme correctly. And then you will combine your narration and music into a single audio file, saving your combined audio file in one of these formats, MP3, MP4A, and etc. And of course, at the end of this week, you will be submitting your combined audio file for assignment three. Well, basically, at the end of this week, you will have a recorded, well-prepared audio narration plus a storyboard. So then, so that we can move on to the next part, working with the software part. Let's start on recording devices in the first place. To have a high quality audio narration, you have to firstly record uh, your narration using uh, let's say high quality, good devices and microphones cannot be overlooked because without microphones, you cannot really turn off the background noise. If you want your narration to be clear and smooth, you have to use microphones. In our previous sessions, we have talked about the types of the microphones, so we will not be discussing it in detail this time. I will be just giving you some of the key points. So we have dynamic and condenser microphones. Dynamic microphones usually have the advantage of electromagnet effects. Well, basically in a dynamic microphone, the diaphragm moves either a magnet or a coil when sound waves hit the diaphragm and movement creates a small current. And condenser microphones is essentially a capacitor with one plate of the capacitor moving in response to uh, sound waves. Well, condenser microphones are usually need a small battery to provide the voltage across the capacitor. So there are some good and best practices for making audio recordings. In the first place, always ask the permission before recording someone if you would like to add an interview with some person into your digital story or if you would like to use someone else's words in your story, you have to have a permission beforehand. Also, it's a good practice to record at certain qualities because um, it may be used if needed due to limitations. Um, we really highly recommend you to use 24-bit format because that will not be a really huge file. It will be easy to work with and most of software programs that you will be using to edit your digital story support this format. 
And also small recorders are available that are suitable for both informal and formal recordings. And there are usually improved models, which are not of highly cost. Well, last but not least, you have to have um, audio recording heard before submitting it, because sometimes it's better to get it checked by someone else. So if you have peers or someone who can listen to your audio recording for you, it's, it's better to use a peer support. Now, as we talked about the background music you will be adding to your audio narration, it's essential to, to have uh, legal music for your videos. We can use any music from the internet, but you never know that some types of music may have copyright, and then you will, you will have claims. So in order to avoid this kind of issues when using background music for your digital story, I suggest you certain sites where you can download copyright free music. These are the list of the sites that provides copy, uh, copyright free music, and I will be sending this list right through the chat to you. So please save it because you will need it during the during the process of audio recording. Okay, now storyboarding. Once you already have your audio narration in hand, when you have listened to it and you are sure that you are going to use exactly that audio narration. Now it's time to develop your storyboard. Actually, I have asked you to develop your storyboard and your narration in parallel so that you will know what pictures or what videos you will be using when you are saying certain sentences. So you already have probably um, pictures and videos ready. And now our task is to put it uh, together and make up a storyboard ready. Storyboarding um, for newcomers, I will explain it one more time. It refers to a way of planning for all the things that will appear in the digital story, such as music, pictures, words, text, photos, videos, and etc. Storyboards help storytellers to picture the entire story from the start to finish. Storyboards are created in order, to, in order of things that uh, happened and help to show what things will appear in the video and when. They often inspire new ideas for organization or visual effects, show gaps and help improve the video's quality. So, okay. Think about the place where you will be filming or recording and any challenges you may need to address when you are storyboarding, like lightning, noise, background, and etc. Creating a storyboard can be as simple as sketching out your plans on paper. So as we have already discussed, you can use any tools that, uh, that are okay for you. It can be, uh, let's see, it can be a simple pen and paper, or it can be Microsoft Word or PowerPoint, whatever works for you. Okay. Okay, sorry for being, no, it's okay. You are welcome back. So we are on story storyboarding process. Now, creating a storyboard can be as simple as sketching out your plans on a paper. If you prefer to use your computer, Microsoft Word is the option. We have already seen some examples of storyboarding that have been created using Microsoft Word software, and we will be getting back to it later on. Now, okay, so here we are going to start our first practice with storyboarding. Soon I will be sending this handouts to the group, and I, I ask you to take a look at your storyboard and try to visualize your storyboard. So what you are going to do is basically you will be preparing your storyboard in pieces. This is the first piece of your storyboard. Here, you will be adding the picture or a video that you will be using. If it's a video, you have to include its length. So how many seconds or minutes this video will run? And then that's your first shot. So this are the, these are the lines which will be 
uh, running together with this picture. And you will continue in the same way until you have a clear uh, storyboard in hand. When storyboarding, it's important to plan everything and especially timing because it will make your next process easier. Step five, now we are going to film and record our digital story. Sometimes you'll want to film yourself as a storyteller. It's okay, you can use professional cameras or as simple as phones, any device that you have um, uh, that's available to you, whatever you use. Well, you have to have some tools, including a way to record a video and audio. And you can certainly use a smartphone or tablet, but video camera would work best for those purposes. Before recording, practice using the tools so you know how to use them. It's okay to record yourself in a, uh, as a test in the beginning to see how things appear, how the background works. Maybe you need to change the lightning or background. Maybe you have to pos reposition the camera. So test it first, and then you can go on and work with that. Try to film in a quiet place and make sure that lights are bright enough to see the person, but not too bright that they appear washed out. So lightning is really important if you would like to get a high quality video of yourself. If you are using a microphone, move, it, move its position to get the best sound, usually about seven inches from uh, the speaker's mouth. If you keep the microphone too close to when you are speaking, you will have, um, unclear and very loud uh, recording. So you would like to have it in the perfect place. If you are filming someone rather than yourself, show the person where to look at the camera and etc. So try filming a few takes. It's like brief test shots that we have discussed to work out any issues with sound, video or delivery. Well, don't worry about every single mistake. You don't have to record everything from the beginning. If you, uh, if you will have any mistake or you kind of confuse your words because using the software, you can cut out unnecessary parts later on. Now, adding visual and audio parts together is actually the, uh, let's see, more complicated part of digital storytelling telling uh, process. Digital stories can have different visual and audio options such as photos, video clips, text on the screen, voices, or a video of the storyteller. These things add interest to a story and help give attention to certain things. So visual parts include taking photos, videos, scanning old photos or drawings, and collecting images and materials from other locations. When collecting um, images from the internet, again, be sure that you are using the websites which provide copyright free images. Audio parts. So audio parts include recording and editing voice and recording or finding music and sound effects that uh, match the theme of your story. Know the limits and abilities of your video tools so you can plan properly in the storyboarding phase. A sample tools is available uh, under this handout. I will be sending it separately to our Telegram group. As usual, be aware of copyright rules again and again. While it's tempting to include photos, music, or videos you have found on the web, many of these items may be protected by copyright. If you plan to use things you have found online, you have to get permission first. Or uh, you can use websites that provide copyright free materials. Okay, so this handout also will be our practical work today. Before filming and recording, we have to discuss certain points. The first thing is resources. So what tools do you have? What tools are available to you? And what tools do you need? So last time when you developed digital stories, most of you used video software. So we will be mostly working with the software because it's easy to use. And most of you have already practiced using the software, but still some of you may have other software programs or other tools available. So try to use whatever you have. You don't have to download or buy any, any kinds of new tools. You have to make use of 
what you already have. Now, in our discussion board in Telegram, please share the resources you are using, what software programs you use, and what are the advantages of these software programs. By doing this, you will be helping someone to choose the best tools. And as you know that in our workshop, sharing is caring. So share it with us. Then visual and audio parts. In the next discussion part, you will be sharing information about what kind of visuals and what kind of audio narration are you using. When sharing about visuals, please tell us about what pictures and videos you are using for this digital storytelling, digital story uh, that's called Under One Sun. So what images? will you be using? What videos will, will you be using? And what are the websites you downloaded them from? Or did you scan all photos? Or did you video record yourself or someone else for the sake of this digital story? Then of course, please share about audio parts. What kind of background music you used? And what kind of tools did you use to record yourself? And if possible, you can even share your audio narration so that we can listen to it, so that we will give you uh, some feedback on how well you did in your audio narration. And then start a testing of your recording. If you have some tests going on, you can still share. And if you will have questions in the process, you can post these questions in our Telegram group so that we can make sure that things work out. Now, we are almost in the finished part. After you finish filming and recording, the last step is editing. And in editing also, we will be editing everything using the right tools. There are many tools available to make and share stories. And it's not limited to any particular technology. Storytellers do not have to use professional tools. Sometimes a smartphone is all you need. Well, free software or apps may might fit your needs just as well as or better than paid software programs, so you don't really have to purchase everything. Well, the skills of the storytellers usually improve by telling the story, so you will learn more from the process itself rather than during the theoretical parts, so you have to practice. You have to use your creativity and you have to spend more time on it so that you will be really best in digital storytelling. Well, know your resources. And you should know that there are many resources available on the internet at your local library or college, likely even where you work. So maybe there are people in your life who can help you. This can be family members, friends, or peers. Of course, choose the right tools and right resources before start. And there are some helpful tools for our new participants. Some storytellers might already be comfortable with certain tools. So as we had last time, most of you already had experience with VVideo. And even without further tutorials, you could create a really good story using VVideo. But some others might need some tips on how to use the software programs. That's why please share your experience and share the tools you are using so that others may follow up on your advice. The tools listed in the following tables are commonly used uh, options for, let's see, for normal computer users like us. We are not professionals. Yes, we have digital literacy, but in an intermediate level, let's say. So the software programs I'm going to share now provide basic tools to edit and produce videos on different platforms. And you can go ahead and take a look at the list. So there are certain video editing software programs that I recommend. This is iMovie, Windows Movie Maker, Animoto, Blender, and etc. So all of them are almost free and you can create digital stories using them. Audio recording devices. We mostly work with Audacity, SoundCloud, but even your simple voice recorder on your phone may work. Photo editing software. There is a Viary photo editor, PaintNet, Pixar, and also I would recommend Canva, which is free and which, which help you create high quality colleges and others. 
Now, that's almost the end of the theoretical session. Now, before going on to the, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. So now we will be uh, moving on to the next practical part of our digital storytelling workshop.